Hey Legionaries, Josh Fullenweider here. Thanks for watching today. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, being unreasonable. Um, this is something that I've learned to be kind of powerful. So recently with my business we um, had been having some, not really setbacks, but people kept wanting to throw uh, kinks in it and slow the process down on getting everything done. So we kept pushing ahead and I kept saying, no, we're getting it done by March 2nd, March 2nd, March 2nd. That's when we need to get this done by. Um, the great thing about doing that was everybody was kind of getting their butt in gear and getting everything in order for March 2nd. So everybody was hustling a little bit more, getting things done, everything was going great. Well, kind of great. <laughs> it was stressful. But, you know, I had three different reasons why we probably should have delayed the opening. Now recently, unfortunately, there was something that came up that's going to push us back about three weeks for opening. And that sucks. Let me just tell you that right now. And, and the person that told me this, what I don't think was very happy that they had to tell it to me because they knew I had been pushing for this March 2nd date. But, I, you know, I wasn't really upset with them. I knew these things would happen. But we had a timeline established from the beginning and the March 2nd date gave us a tight window from the finish of the project to when we could actually open the doors. Um, unfortunately the pro project got delayed but that meant the, the so that meant the opening had to be delayed as well. But I just want to say that I think it's really powerful to be a little unreasonable in your expectations to set firm guidelines and don't let people push you back push back on you for that. You know, if you want something done in a certain time, push for it. Is it realistic? Probably not. I knew mine wasn't before I set the date. I knew that it was probably at least a week too early. Um, just based on the timeline, I thought it might be too hard to finish the construction, get everything moved in there, um, do our training, and then get the doors open. It was going to be about a week from in that to get all of that done. And that was a little tight. So now we're looking at um, a little bit later date, but we're also have two weeks in between there. All this takes the pressure off of everybody that's involved with the project. But the thing of it is, is they've already got so much work done. And I've already got so much work done because I was planning on March 2nd. So three weeks later, it sucks, but it's not the end of the world. Um, but I just want to encourage everyone out there to be a little bit re unreasonable in what you ask for. Because you never know. You, if I had said, hey, let's shoot for March 22nd, uh, you know, everybody probably would have been kind of bouncing around, do, doing their thing, getting ready for March 22nd. Would we have opened on March 22nd anyway? Maybe. Or come you know, now they could be saying, hey, we're not going to be ready for another four weeks, and now you're looking at April sometime. So, you never know. I think it helps. Um, but, you know, I wasn't just unreasonable with everybody else in my timeline expectation. I was also unreasonable with myself. Um, by setting that deadline, I forced myself to get a lot of the work done earlier than I probably would have any other time. I started doing a soft advertising for hiring because that was a month out when, um, well, it's a month out from now, which when you see this, it wouldn't have been a month out. But anyway, I, I'm like, I need to start getting people hired. I had to get my job description in order, start uh, developing a plan for how I was going to market that job out there. So now that were three weeks later, I can kind of do a longer soft advertising if I so choose because I've already started it. And I'm ready to pull the trigger on a paid advertising for that description. Um, everybody else is already in order for the vendors that are supplying us with things. Um, all the parts and pieces were coming together for that March 3rd and now there's a lot of pressure by not having to be open by, well, I guess March 2nd. I don't know why I just said March 3rd. So anyway, I, it's a, this is a strategy I've used in other parts of my professional life as well. When I was at work, I would sometimes set unrealistic expectations of coworkers. 
especially when I was in banking. Sorry guys that were in banking with me. I know I did this by saying, hey, I need those loan documents by this date and, you know, kind of forcing people to get those done. A lot of times they got them done by those dates. You know, they were stressed and it was a hustle and there was a lot of work to be done to get things done by that date. And then other times they said, hey, I, it really can't be done until a couple of days later, a week later, whatever it is, which was still great and probably faster than if they'd said, oh, there's no pressure on this one. Let's focus on the ones where there's the high pressure. Uh, kind of that squeaky wheel gets the grease type of thing going on. I kept saying, hey, here's what we need to do and this is when we need to do it. And what, you know, I wasn't complaining, not quite like the squeaky wheel gets the grease, but I was definitely the type to push for what I thought, thing, when I thought things should be done and how they should be done. So, done that in other things. Um, I think this principle can be applied to your investing. You know, if you're out there looking for your best returns and you go to your financial broker and they say, hey, you know, market's not doing great this year. Here's a, we can put you in this thing, earn you 8% and our commission is 1.5%. Um, you might, you might be like, well, sh now I'm at a, I cussed again and I'm going to have to edit that out again. So eight, that leaves you at five and a half percent net. That's not a very good return in a, I mean, it's okay, but there are other things you can do to get a better return. So be a little unreasonable, do a little bit more digging, push back on them. One and a half percent is not a a number that is universal to everything. Uh, some brokers will go as low as 1%, others, you know, can be closer to 2%. Um, so sh one, know that there are options out there. By being unreasonable, you, you know that you can push back and you can say, hey, look, 1.5% doesn't do it for me. Maybe that is negotiable. I don't know. Most brokers that I've known have always said, no, they won't negotiate it because it's not fair. Um, and I'm sure there's probably laws and regulations that go into that, but not the point because if this person can only get you five and a half percent on a portfolio, but the next guy can get you 6%, 7% or 8% net of fees, then, you know, maybe it's worth going to, with that other broker. Now there might be reasons why five and a half percent is a good return for you right then. And it feels safer. But a lot of these brokers have access to different products, and I'm going to go down a rabbit hole apparently here and not talk about being unreasonable. But they have access to other products, so they can give you a different proposal. You know, just because what they've shown you is what they think they can get you doesn't mean that's the only product they have available for you. That might be the product that they recommend because their personal investing style is very safe and secure. Um, Personally, I interviewed a couple of brokers and I went with one who was more, much more aggressive because their model met my expectations of how much I wanted to earn in my portfolio. So anyway, I'm going to wrap this up here because I can talk about it for, for a while yet, but just be unreasonable, be a little bit unreasonable, you know, still be nice, still be kind, for, be forgiving of people when they don't meet your expectations, you know, the, being a little bit unreasonable makes it hard for them to approach you and give you, tell you when things are negative. So you've got to weigh it with um, being that kindness and forgivingness. So when I, I hope I did a good job when I was told that we needed to delay the project two weeks, that I, I was very forgiving of that person and said, hey, it's not really your fault. This is something, and this truly was something completely outside of the control of anybody in here and I know that they did their best to get everything here in time it was just a shipping error on a part some parts that we absolutely needed to get before we can finish our project off and of course that one part that they've been working on trying to get for two and a half months showed up and it wasn't right <laughs> so what do you do you can't do anything about it at this time so you know, don't, don't sacrifice being kind just to get what you want. Always weigh it with kindness and 
you know, be forgiving of mistakes. And most of the time, mistakes aren't the fault of any one person or even a group of people. It's just the way things are. And when you're unreasonable, you're not, you're not reasoning, literally, you're not reasoning that thing, things can go wrong. So it's okay. And you need to forgive yourself with, for things like that as well. And um, be aware with yourself and forgive yourself as well. That's all I've got for you today, guys. Hope you got something out of this. Thanks so much for watching. Hey, Legionaries. Thanks for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you could like, comment, and share, I'd appreciate it. Let me know what type of topics you'd like to see covered in future videos.